This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Hey, welcome guys. Welcome back to our podcast. Here we are, ready for another big, exciting one because we have something crazy to talk about. And it's it's a topic that people don't love to talk about because it can be kind of inflammatory. But, and- but, 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 but here it goes. You ready? You should probably take all of your vitamins and throw them in the trash because they are killing you. I know. I'm sorry. No, they're not killing you. They're just not making you any better. They are slowly killing you. Some of they're them they're slowly leeching. Some you. Some of them might actually be killing you. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll talk about that because that yes, no, they probably aren't killing you. Depends on the research. And as you probably listened to our last episode, the research can be hazy and biased, but there are some truths to some of these extreme conclusions in research. So we're going to talk about that today. Let's not keep them all waiting to find out now that they're scared for their lives. All right, guys. Did you even know that your your supplements are most likely synthetic? Like 95% of all the supplements are the vitamins, should I say specifically, because there's vitamins, there's minerals, there's antioxidants, like all like 95% of the vitamins on the shelves are synthetic. So unless you've been dealing with us for a while or people very similar to us, you you may not have heard that before, which means you've been taking these things for a long time. Mm-hmm. And that is not good. You would probably be better off not taking anything, which is why there are so many people in the health world, many doctors included, that would tell you not to waste your time with it right? Exactly. Either it's not doing anything or it's causing potential harm. Right. So um, let's, let's get into it. Let's talk about the industry for a second. Let's. Ooh, okay. Let's, let's go right. Am I, am right I on it. the bullet points? <laughs> am You're I not, going in the right direction? I'm going to let you go with this. I'm excited. You guys, we need to talk about this industry for a second. One, when you're buying a supplement, like there's a company out there that wants to make money from you. So what is their, what, what is their bottom line? It's not to make you healthier. It's to make the most money from you right? So how do they go about doing that? They do that through synthetic vitamins because whole food vitamins from real food is way more expensive and it's not very shelf stable. So they are going to get their biggest bang for their buck by doing a synthetic. And let's take from there. All right. So maybe before we actually go there, let's let's talk about why supplements might be worth taking in the first place. Otherwise we can just end the episode, right? Right. Supplements are bad for you. Stop taking them. Have a nice week, everybody. Right. Goodbye. (laughs) So they, they do serve some purpose. And some of that purpose being, you know, if you eat food, let's say you have messed up gut biome, like you're not absorbing a lot of that food. So you need mega doses of certain vitamins to help you overcome maybe some health ailment. And so, um, Mm -hmm. so that's where a supplement really will serve you. Yeah. And there are several other reasons too. So the having a bad diet in the first place. Now we talk about this all the time. You cannot replace a healthy diet with supplements as much as we would love to be able to take a magic pill that undoes all of our ice cream and candy bars and Mm. makes us fit and healthy. It's not going to happen. However, you can still make up for some deficiencies with these supplements. And in particular, one that comes to mind is the fact that we don't eat organs anymore. I I feel like we talk about this all the time, but that's how important it is. Without the organs, which are some of the most nutrient rich foods that you can possibly put into your body, there's a really good chance that you're going to be deficient in something. Well, and then we talk a lot about um, soil quality, like the soil that we are using these days to grow our food is so depleted and so malnourished and so sprayed with antifungals and bacteria and glyphosate that it really holds no nutritional value anymore. So we're growing food that back. So they, they, there's a study that shows that one orange back in the forties has 16 times more nutrients than an orange grown today. So you would need to eat like 16 oranges to get the same nutritional value as what they were getting. Yeah, and th- there's actually a whole, a whole series of these types of studies that are comparing foods from back before mm-hmm. soil degradation started and now, and they have found over and over again that the food that we're getting today is just not as good. It's, it's partially a soil issue. It's partially the growing methods that they mm-hmm. use because just like every other industry, they're trying to pinch as many pennies as they can in order to increase their bottom line. Exactly. And one of the ways that they do that is by changing their farming practices, which increases the water weight of 
produce, which mm-hmm. makes it heavier, and therefore they can charge you more because you pay by the pound for a lot of these things. Right. But water does not have nutrients. Right. And they're so. not rotating their crops anymore. They're growing the same thing over and over and over. And so they're leaching the same nutrients from that soil. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they're, they're, should we talk about the other reasons? I mean, there's yeah. environmental toxins through the roof these days, mm-hmm. right? I mean, here where we live in Utah, we get this terrible smog every winter for right. at least a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And it's just awful. It's putting all kinds of stuff into our system that probably exactly. shouldn't be there. And our body has to use up really important nutrients right. to, to keep us healthy. So, so as you guys can tell, like supplements really do play a part, but as long as we're supplementing correctly and we're getting supplements that don't harm our body, because yes, synthetics will leach your body of a, a very, very, very important vitamins and cofactors that help you assimilate nutrients and help your cells function optimally. Great. So, so looking at the research on this, there are a couple of things that we see. The really important one is that there was a, a big study in the Journal of the American Medical Association back in 2002 that did look at outcomes when you take supplements versus when you don't take supplements. And they did find that there is an advantage to taking supplements. So they mm-hmm. do seem to help. However, when you start drilling down into specific supplements, you start to see some problems and that's that most of them tend to either not help or they do create harm. Right. And we're about to get into why we've already talked about it a little bit, but it's because of what these supplements are actually containing. Right. And as we all know, because you're listening to this podcast, like our country is not getting any healthier. So we're, this is a, what is it? A $1.5 billion. Like, so Americans, spend $1.5 billion on supplements and we're sicker than ever. So they're obviously not pushing us in the right direction. Yeah. Something is definitely not working when we're spending billions and we're still getting sicker and sicker. They estimate that by 2035, somewhere around 45%, mm-hmm. almost one in two Americans is going to have a heart disease related problem. Exactly. Okay. So, so let's talk about what a synthetic vitamin is. It's, it's basically, so you get a food or the, actually a lot of synthetic vitamins are made from coal and tar and petroleum. petroleum. Yep. Um, believe it or not, guys, isn't that just ridiculous who eats that kind of stuff? But um, it's they. So these substances are highly processed. They go through several steps of manufacturing and processing and fermentation. And then um, the, and they go through um, like, for example, ascorbic acid is from cornstarch or corn sugar or or rice starch, and they use volatile acids to help extract these um, substances from these foods. And then they add sugar and call it a Flintstone vitamin. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's not even go. <laughs> By the way, um, Bayer, who owns the Flintstone vitamin company, also owns, um, bought Monsanto. So there we go. There's a nice little connection there. Um, so not only are they poisoning you with vitamins, they're poisoning you with glyphosate now. So. But maybe we should back up for a second and talk about what a vitamin is. So we, we talked generally about supplements and oh, supplement yeah. quality, and then we talked a little bit about synthetic vitamins, but, but what makes a vitamin? What, what is in the vitamin category? So we're talking A, D, um, E, K, all the B vitamins. The um, whole alphabet. Yes. <laughs> Did I say D? I did. The you fat did. soluble, yep. the water soluble. What else are we talking about? What am I missing? Uh, I mean, we don't need to cover all of them, but okay. but you've heard of them. You've probably seen them all over the labels of different foods and supplements exactly. that you've purchased. Your cereals are fortified with them. And trust me, like if you're buying a cereal that's fortified, it's fortified with something synthetic. But these vitamins are extremely important in our body. They do a huge variety of things. We couldn't even begin to list off all of the functions of these different vitamins. Mm-hmm. But what's important to note is that without them, our body tends not to function very well. Exactly. For instance, if you you don't get enough vitamin C, you end up with scurvy. Mm-hmm. And scurvy, you may have heard of from back in the day before they discovered how important it was. It, it results in people getting extremely sick. Basically, your connective tissue just falls to pieces. Exactly. And you usually end up dying of probably a heart attack would be my guess because yep. your heart is made of connective tissue. Yep. Right. And in the meantime, you're just terribly sick. So, so these vitamins are extremely important. And when we get low on them, we have big problems, but, uh, we've been finding over and over again through the research that 
not any vitamin will do. Exactly. So where do we go next from here? So why don't we, um, so we've kind of defined what a synthetic vitamin is, you Mm -hmm. know, they're, they're often isolates actually, and they can really be compared to maybe drugs. Now, um, they're not as bad as medications and drugs, but it is an isolate. It's not a whole food form. So we have defined the synthetic. Yeah, we've talked about the synthetic. So let's talk about the, the isolated, which it can come from a food, which is better, but by the time they've finished doing all of the processing and refining and the mm-hmm. breaking down, what you have left does not really represent or resemble what is found in exactly. nature. Right? So let's talk about vitamin C in nature. What do we find in a true form of vitamin C? Now, if you're looking at your vitamin label right now and you're looking under vitamin C, it's going to say ascorbic acid next to it. Probably. Now, I want to explain to you where ascorbic acid fits in the picture of vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is one tiny part of vitamin C. There are other parts of that vitamin C, like factor P, factor J, factor K, and tyrosinase, okay? All of these factors help your body metabolize that ascorbic acid and that vitamin C and help your cells utilize it better. So if you are taking high doses of just ascorbic acid, your body has to leach itself of all of those factors to help assimilate it. So so it's probably helpful to think of the vitamin C thing as a... a living complex, right? Yes. It's made up of these several other organisms that all work together to achieve something really important. Exactly. And one of those pieces is extremely important. That is the ascorbic acid. And that is a part of the vitamin C complex. And it oftentimes serves as the antioxidant. You've probably heard many times that vitamin C is an antioxidant, which mm-hmm. is what makes it so great. But the ascorbic acid is the is the only antioxidant part of exactly. the Exactly. It's it's only a part of the story. And you mm-hmm. need all of these other pieces of the puzzle in mm-hmm. order to get a properly functioning thing. So like Jonique was saying, your body is capable of pulling those other parts in order to make a complete vitamin C complex and yes. get the job done for a while. Mm-hmm. But exactly. eventually, if you keep going with these high doses of ascorbic acid only without all the other parts, your body is going to get depleted. Exactly. And so Tristan mentioned earlier how we have to take vitamin C for connective tissue issues like scurvy. If you don't have enough vitamin C, you will start manifesting scurvy-like symptoms. Now, when you take too much just ascorbic acid down the line, long term, you start connect you start developing connective tissue disorders. Now, a lot of people aren't like, well, I don't have scurvy, but look at yourself right now and tell me, do you bruise easily? Do you potentially have IBS or digestive issues? Do you have loose skin? Do you, you know here's, what else? Here's one that you may not have thought about and that uh, would be surprising to a lot of people is that if you've got high cholesterol, mm-hmm. that can actually be a symptom of low vitamin C because exactly. your arteries need that vitamin C to properly build up their walls. Yep. And if they don't, guess what they're going to do to patch all the holes that start appearing? What? They're going to use cholesterol. Oh, there you go. Yep. They're going to produce cholesterol and start patching up the walls, which then creates that plaque that is infamous for causing heart attacks right. and strokes and pulmonary embolisms. So then what do we do when we have something like that? We're like, oh, let me just take vitamin C. It helps to heal my cells. No, it's going to continue to deplete you and it's going to exacerbate this issue. I cannot tell you how often I've had people with IBS or IBD come into the office and they're like, well, I'm taking tons of vitamin C. And I'm like, okay, pause right there. Show me your supplement. Like I'll literally have them pull it up online so I can see the label. And I'm like, okay, you need to stop taking this immediately because it's exacerbating your condition. And then they would often reply to me and be like, oh, I wonder why I was hurting my stomach so much. And I'm like, well, <laughs> there you go. And then we tell them to drop kick it out the window. <laughs> Don't give it to your neighbor. Don't poison them. <laughs> so, um, so, so that's our spiel with vitamin C. And it's, again, it's the same thing with all the other vitamins, how they just are not recognized properly in the body. Um, let's take vitamin E, for instance. So with vitamin E, you, if you're looking at your Pull out your supplements, guys. Look at your bottle. Does it say alpha D tocopherol or alpha L tocopherol? 
Well, it, uh, typically you'll see either D alpha tocopherol. Oh yeah, or D alpha tocopherol. I think or the L alpha tocopherol. L, L the letter L and then the alpha sign and then tocopherol. Yeah, or D L dash alpha spelled out dash tocopherol. Exactly. You'll, there's an infinite variety of ways to there to is. put it out there, but but so, that D L alpha tocopherol is one of the more common. So the L and the D signify that that vitamin E structure is in a different form. Like it looks completely different. So think of a puzzle and each piece has different knobs and and holes at different parts, right? Exactly. And in order for the puzzle to fit together, you need to put the piece in, in the right position, right? You can't just say, oh, that piece goes here and then force it in mm-hmm. in whatever direction it happens to be facing. Yes. So when your body is... Tr- your body has enzymes that breaks down that vitamin E, but it can only recognize when that vitamin E is in the D alpha tocopherol, um, what's the word I'm shape mm-hmm. basically. Like if it's in a different shape, if it's in the L shape, L alpha tocopherol, those enzymes are not going to recognize it. You're not going to be metabolizing vitamin E. You're just going to be releasing it. Yeah. That would be like if your puzzle piece was mirrored from what you needed exactly. and then you try to fit it in that puzzle and you're going to be frustrated. Exactly. You'll never finish it. And so, so this, so when people are like vitamins are just really expensive urine, you know, they're not wrong. It depends on what vitamin you're taking. Now, unfortunately with vitamin E, that is a fat soluble vitamin. So you're just storing it in your fat and that could be potentially dangerous down the line. Yeah. Another famous example of that would be vitamin A which has been shown to cause liver toxicity in a lot Mm -hmm. of people. And uh, there's a couple of things that can cause that, but one of them is really high doses of synthetic vitamin A. Mm -hmm. When you're getting just natural food sources in normal quantities, so you're not eating like 10 pounds of liver a day, then your body's going to be able to deal with that. It's going to know what to do with it and things will go just smoothly. But when you get that synthetic and it's in really high doses, and by the way, one of the big telltales that your vitamins are synthetic is that the doses that you see on the label are insanely high, like 2000% of your daily recommended allowance or Mm -hmm. daily recommended intake. Like that's not good guys. We really don't need to go above and beyond like, like going to the two, three, four thousand percentages, right? Now, just to kind of give you guys a reference, if you're looking at your supplements right now, the synthetic name is palmitate or acetate. So if you're looking at that, make sure it doesn't have any of those names. Okay. Yep. And maybe we'll talk more about some of those names so people know what to look for on their labels exactly. once we get further in. Oh, kind of talking about um, those recommendations. So Re- like the, the the daily recommended allowances, um, those are those are actually based off of um, synthetic vitamins. So you guys, we don't even know fully what our daily allowance should be when it comes to whole foods. Like that's still up in the air. Yep. So let that sink in for just a second. So so you know so we're our job here is one, to tell you we don't have all the answers, but to two, recognize that there is a problem in our society right now, and that is that we are putting way too much trust in these companies that are selling us really cheap synthetic vitamins. Um, And to kind of go back to a previous episode where we talked about science, we also put way too much trust in science as this big block of people. And just trust whatever published study is out there without mm-hmm. actually looking into how it was conducted. Exactly. Right? So um, should we, should we talk a little bit more about how the industry can kind of deceive us with their labeling? Yeah. I so think are, this is are we a talking really about the, se- the food derived stuff? So let's talk a little bit about the FDA's role in supplements, you guys. Okay. So let's say you are, you're, you're someone who wants to start a supplement company, right? And so what you go to the FDA and all their job is to do is to make sure that what you have is not toxic. Like they don't regulate exactly what is in your pill. So you could do 20% of vitamin and 80% filler and then sell that as a vitamin and mislabel it as, let's say, 100% vitamin A. Meanwhile, you're only doing 20% vitamin A and the rest is filler. You can label that and sell it to us. And the only way you are going to be caught is if a third-party tester comes out and takes your product and tests it. 
And even if that happens, it doesn't necessarily mean people are going to find out about it. Right? Exactly. You have you do have these third party testers all over the place that are doing these types of things, but the average person in the grocery store is not mm-hmm. on that website looking at those tests to see if the vitamin in their hand is going to be a good one or not. Mm-hmm. And and another example of that that we were talking about earlier is that in order for a vitamin to be called natural, it only actually needs to be 10%, 10% from food natural. Source. So it can be 90% synthetic and mm-hmm. still have a label of natural. Isn't that unbelievable? And, and you know, to really get into what these synthetic vitamins are capable of, when they are highly isolated and pure and concentrated and you take them in really high doses, it is not all that dissimilar to a lot of medications out there. In mm-hmm. fact, it's the same process they use to create a medication. Right. They find a substance in nature that seems to have a benefit And then they isolate it from its source, which most of the time is some kind of plant. And then once they've got it isolated, they concentrate it as much as they possibly can into basically a pill form. And then they put that into a a living organism to see what happens. And eventually it leads to things like the medications that everybody's taking all the time. Exactly. And as you all know, the side effects of these medications are all over the board. Some of them are absolutely terrible, but it's almost a guarantee that they're going to have side effects. So when I say that synthetic vitamins are kind of in the realm of medications, I'm not kidding. And they do have side effects. Most of the time we don't even realize it. Right. So just to kind of give you like a little story on like what happens within research is, um, What scientists often do is this. They will see that there is a link between a health issue and a food. And let's say, for instance, oh, I remember studying Moringa back in the day. And, or was it green tea? It was, um, what's the antioxidant that's really high in green tea that everyone loves? ECGC. Okay, so ECGC. And so scientists are saying, oh my gosh, green tea and ECGC um, with cancer patients helps their survival outcome. So what, what do scientists do? They see this correlation and then they start taking ECGC and they hyper manufacture it, right? So they extract it from a bunch of green teas and other substances that have ECGC and they hyper concentrate it. And then they do their own studies with high concentrations of ECGC in isolate forms. And what do they start seeing? They see that there are now health issues with people mm. taking these isolate forms. So we go from one side of the pendulum swing to the complete opposite side. And we're like, oh, well, and then everyone gets frustrated. We're like, well, is it good for you? Is it not good for you? It's the same thing with B vitamins. So for instance, there's lots of studies that say, you know, taking B vitamins helps cancer patients with outcomes, helps tons of other health issues and so on and so forth. So what do people do? They hyper, they, they do it in massive amounts of doses. And then what do we start seeing? correlations with increased um, lung cancer um, growths in a lot of patients and whatnot. And so again, it's, it's taking, it's seeing these correlations with um, natural or normal um, amounts of a substance mm-hmm. and taking it to the nth degree. And because we want to, we want to hyper manufacture something and then sell it for super cheap. And that is the culture around research and foods and supplements and vitamins, and it's toxic and it needs to stop. Now, just to be really clear here, a lot of the time when they see those original correlations that get them digging deeper, it's food-based, right? Yes. They, they look at a group of people who eat a lot of a certain food, let's mm-hmm. say fatty fish, and then they say, oh, there's something in fatty fish that is causing these positive outcomes we're seeing in this group of people. Right. And then they start trying to break it down and they, they might say, oh, it's the, the DHA that's in the fatty fish, right? And then they go through that process Janique was describing and they get the, the hyper-concentrated super doses and they start giving that to people. And in the case of DHA, as far as I know, we haven't seen any major issues with hyperdoses, mm-hmm. but with things like vitamin E, they actually do start seeing that mm-hmm. it leads to cancer, exactly. right? Sometimes the very thing they thought that they were going to be curing, curing. Uh-huh. by doing that. And massive doses is so, just dangerous. So the reason why this happens though is, yes, the scientists want to find out what the causative factors are. They want to know what's responsible for the positive outcomes. And that's a totally noble endeavor. They should do that. However, there's a bigger motive behind it. And it's that you can't make money off no. of people eating healthy foods. No, I mean, not a lot of money. 
Right. So, so yeah, so they see that these correlative studies are like, oh my gosh, these people are eating healthy foods like green tea and they're getting better. Let's see how we can sell this. Let's see how we can manufacture this. Let's see how we can put this in a pill so that we can make money. And that doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve me. It just serves some really massive corporations out there. Right. And that it's the very definition of reductionism where you break down something that works really well to try to find the parts that are responsible without recognizing that it isn't a part that's responsible it is the whole it mm-hmm. is how the parts interact with each other exactly. that leads to the positive outcomes mm-hmm. it's an entourage effect it's the, going back to the vitamin c it's not just the ascorbic acid it's the cofactors it's the tyrosinase it's it's the whole working as it was designed with your body from nature to help your body implement it and so going from there should we should we talk about these uh, companies that actually develop the synthetic vitamins. All right, <laughs> let's do it. Let's okay. give it to them. All right, guys. So let's pretend that you are somebody who wants to create a vitamin company. You want to formulate your own. And so you start calling up companies and these companies do formulations for you. They ball it for you. They put it in a pill. Um, where did those companies get their substances from? Go ahead. You want me to tell? Yeah, you? I do oh. want you to tell. I want you to go right into we need, it. We need a sign so that we know when we're actually quizzing okay. each other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, green light, you go. <laughs> so there's a couple different places. Now, the one that's most disgusting to me and the one that really scares me is petroleum and or coal tar. Oh, I'm not even talking about that. I'm saying, oh. like, I'm talking about... Which, okay, so let me let me <laughs> cut to, because so, we already spoke. It comes from we petroleum, did. it comes from tar, it mm-hmm. comes from corn, mm-hmm. it comes from processed soy. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like, that's not organic and it's GMO. Are we talking about the actual companies? The themselves? companies. So uh, there are five companies here ah, in the okay. United States of America that produces all of the synthetic vitamins in the United States. And, and every single one of those companies, as far as I know, are pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies, guys. Can you, you believe that? Like, not only are they getting us with our drugs, but they are now getting us and making us sick through synthetic vitamins. Do we have the list right here? I have it right in front of me. All right, let's, let's read off the names of these top five companies that are producing most of the synthetic vitamins. All right, you ready? <laughs> Number one, Arnett Pharmaceutical Corporation. Pharmaceutical. Okay, Botanical Laboratories That almost sounds natural. I know, right? Contract Pharmaceutical Corporation. Pharmaceutical again. Leaner Health Products Incorporated. That sounds nice. And then (laughs) Perry. That sounds nice. I want some leaner. (laughs) And then Perigo Company. Perigo. Perigo Company. All right. And when you actually look at all these companies, you find that they are, in fact, pharmaceuticals or owned by pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, they're owned by our massive big pharma. So they're not only um, leeching our pocketbooks from one end, but they're doing it from the other end. And they're doing it under the skies of, hey, look, you're making yourself better so, and you're not. So when you're trying to make your own vitamin company, you are getting your sources from big pharma because they are they are saturating the market like crazy. Now, now think about this. How many people out there refuse to take pharmaceuticals because they're bad for you and Mm -hmm. they think that pharmaceutical companies are evil, but they are taking all kinds of these synthetic vitamins. And essentially they're in the same treadmill with everybody else. That's sad. Yes, it is sad. And that's why we're doing this podcast because we want everybody to know Mm -hmm. what's really going on, what's really going into this. And this is why the industry is so big. This is why, by the way, the FDA hasn't started cracking down on supplements. Yeah. And honestly, I'm glad the last thing we need is the government coming in and trying to crack down on everything. But it's because they are influenced by the same lobbyists that allow all these opioids to be prescribed in mass to the population. In fact, the FDA is 40 percent funded by these by Big Pharma, 40 percent, guys. So the FDA and Big Pharma are pretty much BFFs. They they pat each other's backs and they make a lot of money. This is really sad for me because I believe that if the government has a purpose, it's to protect us from the 
some of the the worst impulses mm-hmm. of big businesses, yeah. right? As as individuals, we only have so much power in our relationship with these large corporations, and government's supposed to come in and make up the gap. But what do we do when the government and the big corporations are the same? Right. They have all the power mm-hmm. and all we really have is information. Right. And that's why we need to spread information. Exactly. We need people to become educated so that we can actually stand up for ourselves. And like, and yes, we are small people throwing like little stones at this massive wall, but we need to recognize those walls. And that is, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the FDA. Um, I'm not a big fan of big pharma, obviously, but it's also these monstrous companies like Monsanto and Bayer, which I just told you guys owns that Flintstone vitamin company. So if your kids are eating Flintstones, please throw them away. Don't even give them to your dog. Like don't poison your dog with Flintstones, Flintstone supplements. And since we're putting a whole bunch of companies on blast, we might as well add one more to the list. Now, a lot of people are going to hate this. Because this is a company that has received a lot of love from the alternative Uh-oh, health I think world. I know what you're gonna say. Smarty pants. Oh my gosh! Don't say we, it. We even have a bottle we at do. home. Because I fell pants for it vitamins. when I didn't know any better. I bought Smarty Pants supplements for my kids. Now, now Smarty Pants has is done it Smarty a, Pants or is it Smart Pants? I think it's Smarty, Smarty pants. pants. Okay, that's but sounds they, better, they've right? done a, a really excellent marketing job of convincing everybody that they are the better option when it right. comes to vitamins because they use things like methylcobalamin mm-hmm. instead of cyanocobalamin. That's a, right. a B12. Which, right? you know, like our methylated B12 right now is all the rage, guys. I mean, every, everybody knows about methylation now and everybody wants a methylated B12. And so what Smarty Pants did was they jumped on the methylated B12 bandwagon and they said, look, we're ahead of the game. We're putting a methylated B12 in our supplement now. Now give this to your children. Yet they haven't caught up with the vitamin C and the vitamin A and the vitamin E Mm -hmm. and all of the other ones. They're still making a lot of the same mistakes that most of the other companies are making. And Mm -hmm. as a result of that, if you are taking Smarty Pants or giving them to your children, you should probably reconsider. Yes. And maybe we should give people other options before the end of the episode so that they Mm -hmm. aren't left totally despairing without anywhere to turn. Now, there's another really fun thing that these supplement companies are doing to kind of trick us. They're saying on their bottles that it's from 100% natural sources. Mm -hmm. And then what they're doing, and I I actually saw an an MLM company do this the other day, and I was like, wow, that's really clever. (laughs) Um, It's almost admirable if it wasn't so evil. So the very first thing, okay, and this is a trick that you guys can do too because look when you look at a label the very first thing your eye should go towards is vitamin c because one it is super cheap and mm-hmm. so if they are skimping on vitamin c they're skimping on everything else mm. so look at the vitamin c does it say ascorbic acid if it says ascorbic acid put that vitamin down do not touch it ever ever again now, so what no, let me let me finish my story though so with this company what they did was i looked at the vitamin c that's the first thing my eye went to and it said ascorbic acid and vitamin C from berries. And I was hey, like, oh my gosh, that's, that's interesting. so clever. I haven't seen that before. Yes, and I'm seeing it more and more now mm-hmm. where they're doing the synthetic and then they're also putting a food source as well. And I'm like, wow, they are really upping their game because people are catching on now. So here's a question. Do but they, it's not good enough. Don't settle for ascorbic acid. Do they tell you what percentages? percentage of each? No, they, oh, they never do. That most, is, most mm. supplement companies don't. But if it was really good... They yeah. would tell you. They totally they would. They wouldn't leave that opportunity like, sitting on the table. Like if they said 90% vitamin C from berries and 10% ascorbic acid, I might be tempted to buy it. Mm-hmm. Might. Well, and that that's actually a really good point because ascorbic acid is an antioxidant and exactly. therefore it's a preservative. Yeah. And in very small doses, it can be a very effective way to keep these products shelf stable. Exactly. And so a little bit of ascorbic acid is not going to ruin your life, exactly. especially if your primary product in a much larger percentage is whole food. Exactly. Right. But if it was a whole food and most whole food supplement companies brag about it being whole foods left, right and center, you you'll see their their label um, ingredients list is just massive. But if it was primarily from a food source, you know, downright that they would be listing it. They would make a big deal about it because it costs so much money. You would not want to leave that opportunity sitting there. Why would you go through all the expense and all Mm -hmm. the trouble of getting a whole food product and then not tell anybody? So remember in the beginning of this episode, how we said only 10% of the vitamin needs to be from a natural source in order for it to 
call themselves natural. Mm. So that's what these companies are now doing because people are catching on. So why we are here is to educate you on all these fun tricks. So here's what's nice about that, though, is that it's really easy to tell if a, a company's vitamins are good quality because mm. if they are good quality, they are going to make it very clear. Exactly. Um, so, should we talk about that right now? Should we should we yes. give some examples yes. of good products? So this, or should we go more into some of the stuff to look for on a label? So let's go go into an example of good products and then we'll go on to what we should look for on so the label. So there, there's two that, that we really like. We use them at the clinic yes. all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say that they're the only good ones out there. I'm not going to say that they're necessarily the absolute best. But, but they, they are, are the, solid. They are the best that we've found so mm-hmm. far. And can't find anything else that tops them. Mm -hmm. And they are, one is Standard Process, which is kind of the granddaddy of the Mm -hmm. supplement companies. It was started way back in, what, the 1920s, I think, by Royal Lee. And they are excellent because they are whole food based. And he was a freaking genius back in the day. I mean, this guy was on still is. He's just dead. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But like doctors left, right, and center still like worship the Royal Lee Idol because he's amazing. Well, or they consider him a huge quack because he started the supplement industry. Right, right. (laughs) He's he's a very controversial figure for that reason. However, we tend to fall on the side of believing that Mm -hmm. he was onto something. Absolutely. And one of the things that he was really onto was using real foods organs mm-hmm. and natural plants in exactly. his products. And it's not just Standard Process. There's also MediHerb, which is sort of a sister company to Standard Process, right. but it was started in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, but we love their products because not just the sources are good, but their processes are as clean as possible, right? The, so the they, foods they come from organic the, yeah. farms, but go ahead. They set the golden standard. There are actually other organic farms that that go to their farms Mm -hmm. to see, okay, how do we incorporate organic practices again? Because we're, we're forgetting, we're losing that Mm -hmm. a lot of, so we have to relearn how to cleanly farm things again. And a lot of these farmers now are going to standard process to Mm -hmm. look at their farming. Yeah, Not just clean farming, but sustainable farming. Sustainable farming. So that in generations from now, it's still quality produce that's coming from it. And then they use these manufacturing processes that are as gentle as possible in order to maintain all of those wonderful nutrients that come into it. Exactly. So it it probably sounds like we're being sponsored by Standard Process. We're not. not. We just really like their products. The other one we really like is Nutrigold. Nutrigold. And one cool thing about them for us is that they're actually headquartered in the same city mm-hmm. as our clinic. They're in Orem, Utah. Yep. But they have the same philosophy of so, using whole foods. So the lady who started Nutrigold, I might have mentioned this in one of the other podcasts, but she was pregnant and she went to Good Earth, if you guys are local. She went to Good Earth and she asked for the best prenatal supplement there. And she took it and she threw it up and she t- tried another one and she threw it up. And then she started researching supplements and she recognized all of these supplements were all synthetic. And she could not find a food-based supplement. So she created Nutrigold, mm-hmm. and that is where we are now. It was, It's a company created by a woman who was a mom who needed a prenatal supplement. And I love that. Yep, and they have a, a similar philosophy to Standard Process. They use excellent sources. They use mm-hmm. excellent manufacturing and And refining. they brag about it left, right, and center. As they should. As they should. <laughs> I certainly would if yes. I was making what they're making. They have like scan codes that you can scan and see like the batch number where their food was from or the oil was from. And so, and and that's what you want. You want to be able to trace back where they got their source from, where they got that food from, where they got that supplement from. Mm-hmm. And, and they and, oh, yeah. and this is what Nutrigold does. Sorry, go and ahead. One of the reasons why we like both of them, aside from the fact that they're both excellent companies, is that they kind of fill different niches mm-hmm. in the industry because Standard Process is sort of the granddaddy, like I said, but they have between Standard Process and MediHerb, there's like 300 different products. Yeah. So there is something for everyone. Uh, but, but it often requires clinical, like a clinical experience mm-hmm. to kind of cater what supplements go to someone. In order to get them, you have to go through a practitioner. Mm-hmm. Typically, it's going to be a chiropractor, but there are other people like us out there who can get it for people. Exactly. Uh, but that means that you can't just go to a store and pick it up off the shelf. You could go on Amazon and buy it, but there's a fair chance that it's fake. So I would highly recommend not doing that. it's also super expensive. They're going to be really expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's really best if you work with a practitioner because not only can they help you get it, 
but they can help you use it properly it. because yeah. with 300 options to choose from, there's a really high chance you're going to pick the wrong thing and waste your money mm. if you just guess. Or hurt yourself. So Nutrigold, on the other hand, is available to retailers, which means that you can go into a store and pick mm-hmm. it up off the shelf as long as they carry it. And it's kind of like an umbrella supplement company. It kind of touches all bases very gently. Mm-hmm. They have I maybe 30 products is all. Maybe more. So they're, they're quite a bit smaller. Mm-hmm. And that means that they're not necessarily going to get as specific yep. as standard process, but yep. the stuff that they cover, they cover extremely well. So for instance, if someone, on, a stranger on Instagram, and this happens to me multiple times a day, they send me a message and they're like, I'm pregnant. What do you suggest I take? I know nothing about this person's health history. I don't know how old they are. I don't know if this is baby number 10. So what I'll normally do is say, Nutrigold prenatal vitamin. Now, if I have someone coming into me in the clinic saying, "What supp- I'm pregnant and I have X, Y, and Z health issues, what supplement do I need? I'm going to recommend something way more specific, mm-hmm. cater to them and their health issues. And so Standard Process really helps us to get down to the nitty gritty and fine tune someone's health and supplemental protocol that is specific to them. Yeah. And one other difference between the two companies that is worth noting, and it could be a pro or a con, depending on where you stand on this issue. Mm-hmm. Nutrigold almost exclusively uses plant-based sources. Yes. They, they're, they're not a vegan company, but they're, they're yeah. I don't think they're entirely vegan because some of their products have to have some other sources. Well, they sell fish oils too. They do have fish oils, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But whenever possible, they use plant sources. Right. Uh, so for those of you who are plant-based, that's a big mm-hmm. plus. For people like me who think that organs can be extremely beneficial and nutrient-rich, right. that's not necessarily a positive. No, my clients that come in with autoimmune issues and they can't do nuts, mm-hmm. I can't give them Nutrigold. Because a lot of it are nut based. Like for instance, I think their selenium is from a nut. Brazil or, nuts. I probably. think so. I think so. That and so so there sense. there is that issue as well. If you have a food allergy, Nutrigold might not be for you. So now people are wondering, well, okay, that's nice. That's Nutrigold, that's standard process. What about my supplement that I'm holding in front of me right now? So if you are looking at your label, how do you read it? So it will normally say vitamin E from and then list a food. Vitamin C from, and then label a food. If it comes from a food. If it comes from a food, exactly. So it is very clear cut as to where your vitamin whatever is coming from. If it doesn't come from a food, a lot of times you'll see some chemical names in parentheses Mm -hmm. after the vitamin. So for instance, vitamin C in parentheses, ascorbic acid. Yes. Right. Or what else is on there? Vitamin. Vitamin A, it will normally say retinol. Retinol palmitate or mm-hmm. the wishes synthetic like that. Mm-hmm. exactly so um but but that's different for the b vitamins though i i rarely see b vitamins with a food um and that's going into it but that should probably be a podcast for another time. i mean yeah we could spend decades just talking about the b vitamin <laughs> right. stuff but uh but yeah that one will be a little bit trickier however if it's a multivitamin, you'll be able to tell by looking yeah. at the other stuff. Exactly. Some other words to look for, things like acetate, bitartrate, chloride, gluconate, hydrochloride, nitrate, succinate, all of those things are mm-hmm. big signs that you've got yourself a synthetic or you, you an guys, isolate. In the, in the show notes, we're going to put a few links of some really helpful tools and tables that you can look at mm-hmm. to kind of navigate the supplement aisle. But okay. don't get overwhelmed because when it comes down to it, all you have to do is look for the company that's bragging about mm-hmm. using whole foods or yes. 100% natural, that sort of a but, thing. But be careful because there are a yes. lot of companies that say 100% natural and it's not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, one more company worth mentioning that I think does a great job with this is Pure Radiance. Oh, I don't know that. They, they make some excellent, like their vitamin C, I believe is primarily from Amla. Oh, fantastic. And uh, they, they have some really good stuff. We don't carry them at our shop simply because our bases Nutri-Gold are kind of covered there. Is I, <laughs> from Amla as yep. well. So, so yeah. But uh, but that's one worth looking at. And they do have uh, national distribution. I think yeah. Nutrigold does too, but you're going to see it in fewer places. Right. Pure Radiance tends to be all over the place. Mm-hmm. So exactly, that's one worth looking for, for for some of your needs at least. Exactly. Have we hit all our talking points? Well, looks like we've covered just about everything we wanted to. Awesome. Um, so I think that we can probably wrap it up for now. Okay. So just kind of summarize, guys. Um, let's see. 
what I, should I do a summary? Yeah, no, let, let's <laughs> definitely do a summary because we talked about a lot like, of what stuff. Is our time we, like don't, right now? we don't want to leave people okay. lost and confused. So, yes. so here, vitamins are definitely essential with our diets today, with mm-hmm. the soil depletion going on, with all the pollution, all of our stress. You probably we, do need some right. vitamins in different areas, and especially if you have like had a childhood that was on mac and cheese and soda. Like you are very depleted. You probably need to play catch up. You probably need a supplement. Mm-hmm. However, when it comes to supplements, you do not want synthetics, okay? The isolated parts are not recognized by the body as food. And in large amounts, the isolate chemicals function like drugs, okay? So you want to make sure that you are getting a whole food vitamin. It has all the factors. It has everything that helps your body utilize that, okay? It helps the cells to carry all the vital nutrients um, at Anyways, it helped the factors help your cells to get all the vital nutrients. Did I say that right? Yeah, no, I, I think that, that <laughs> covers it. And and by the way, if you are ever confused about this, you are more than welcome to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you mm-hmm. figure these things out, navigate this. But it is worth working with somebody local to you or someone that you have access to that mm-hmm. can help you make sense of this. For instance, you may not know which vitamins you even need. And there are right. ways to find out. There are tests you can do. There are really even just giving a history of your symptoms can give someone a lot of information to help exactly. them pinpoint what would be most helpful for you. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to navigate this alone. Yes. But if you do, then I believe that what we've talked about today is going to protect you and prevent you from running into exactly. big problems down the line. Uh, last thing, don't trust everything the label says. As we said, they are not really regulated very well. Um, and so just be very careful. Unfortunately, having to understand the supplement world and company and culture is like a part-time job. And that's why you have people like us helping advocate for you and brushing through the tedious research and information and articles, because we want to just give you the bottom line. We want to give you the bullet points. Okay. Um, Last but not least, there was something really important and it just like slipped my mind. Oh, oh my gosh. darn. Well, I know it. We'll throw it up in the show notes if yeah. we remember. Otherwise we'll get it in another episode. Exactly. Anyways, thanks guys. Have fun. Have fun.